If we willfully sin, there remains no more sacrifice for sins. See, if we crucify what we counted the blood of the covenant, whereby we was sanctified an unholy thing and insulted the spirit of grace. So we got a lot of false preachers in America today just telling people all you got to do is believe in Jesus and pray a prayer and confess your sins and you saved. So we got a lot of unholy Christians in America today that go to church and they say they love God, but they're not living holy. Your Bible says, without holiness, no one shall see God. That's what it says in your Bible. Is your preacher telling you without holiness, no one shall see God? Is your preacher telling you you've got to live holy so you don't go to hell? According to my Bible, that's what it says. Jesus said, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall inherit the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So we got to do the will of God. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Got a man that come out here today, come over here to me, and he says, do you, do you hear what's going on in America today? He starts talking about homosexuals and transgenders. Okay? So, they, so the preachers, they want to, in a lot of these churches, like this church, they want to talk about homosexuality, but yet they don't want to talk about if you don't live holy, no man shall see God. They don't want to talk about the people going to the, this church, as an example, that's got willful sin in their life. Yep, your Bible says, see, that's the problem in America today. They want to, they want to blame and, and, and speak against homosexuality, which is good, but they don't want to speak against so many people in the church that's having sex outside of marriage, committing adultery, divorcing their husband or their wife, and getting remarried, okay, uh, and, and, and living in adultery. They don't want to talk about all the people in the church, not all, but many, okay, that, that, that are friends of the world. Did you know your Bible says to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is eternal life and peace? So what does Satan do? Paul says Satan has ministers of righteousness transforming themselves as angels of light. So let me tell you how that works. So this man comes up to me and tells me his preacher preaches against transgenderism and homosexuality. And my question is, is he also telling you if you don't live holy that you're going to go to hell? Just because you believe in Jesus ain't going to get you to heaven? Oh, he didn't want to talk about that. He didn't want to talk about that. No, nope. so, so the problem is they want to blame and they want to point fingers at some sin, but they don't want to point fingers at all sin. That's right. So, so we got a lot of people that go to church. They lie. They fornicated. They carnally minded, committing adultery. We got, even, we got people that go to church that even smoke marijuana these days. Yep, I've talked to plenty of them. We got people that go to church and they go to the theaters and watch garbage on the movies. They watch garbage on their television. You know your Bible says to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is eternal life and peace. That's what it says in your Bible. Paul said a carnal mind is enmity against God. So we got to have a spiritual mind, ladies and gentlemen. Your Bible says to be a friend of the world is to be an enemy of God. That's what it says, to be a friend of the world. We got a lot of quote unquote church goers. Man, they so worldly. Yep, they whining and dining. And we got a lot of them having sex outside of marriage. Yep, we got a lot of them lying. Yep, having carnal minds, being a friend of the world. Yep, not walking the straight and narrow. You know, Jesus said narrow and straight is the way that leads into the kingdom of heaven and few there be to find it. How many people do you know 
that say they are Christian and live in holy. You know, that man wouldn't answer my question. Do you have willful sin in your life? Did you know if you can sit in a church and have sin in your life and feel comfortable in that church, then that preacher ain't doing his job right. If that preacher was doing his job right, you'd get the sin out of your life or you'd stop coming to his church. But no, we got a lot of preachers just tickling people's ears, telling them all they got to do is believe and confess Jesus. And they say, yet Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Jesus said, you are my friends if you keep my commandments. Yep. So there's some ifs in your Bible, ladies and gentlemen. There's some ifs. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask what you will and it shall be done. So we got to abide in Jesus. We got to believe in Jesus and we got to obey Jesus. Yeah, but the false preachers say there's no works involved in salvation. That's what this preacher told me at this church. He told me you can't lose your salvation. That means if a person is truly, truly born again, they could, they could commit whatever sin they wanted to commit and not lose their salvation. That's poison. That's, a, that's what the Bible calls doctrines of the devil. That's called heresy. You know, one of the sins under death in your Bible is the sin of heresy. Yep. You know, it's a sin of heresy to say that there's no works involved in salvation. You know, Jesus said faith working alone is dead. Well, James said it, the brother of Jesus, the inspired word of God. James said faith working alone is dead. Yep. So there's a lot of people that's got faith in Jesus but they don't have the works to prove it. Because, oh, well, we went to church. I have never read in my Bible where going to church is a commandment from God. Okay, What I have read in my Bible is, you shall not steal, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not lie, commit murder. Paul says a murderer, a thief, a fornicator, an adulterer, a reveler, a reviler, an extortioner, etc. Those who do these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Paul is talking to believers. He's talking to believers. When Paul says to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is eternal life and peace, he's talking to believers. Yep. He's talking to believers. So James said, even the demons believe and tremble. Yep, that's what he said. Well, most Christians don't even tremble. Jesus said, Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Jesus said, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall inherit the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So that means we got to obey God. We got to do the will of God. But your false preacher says there's no works involved in salvation. Well, Jesus said we got to do the will of the Father. That sounds like some works. Jesus said we got to strive to enter into the narrow and straight gate. That sounds like some work. Jesus said we had to bear fruit or he will cast an unprofitable servant. Notice he said, serve it in the outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. So we got to bear fruit. Jesus said, we got to do a lot of things. He said, we got to deny ourselves. Jesus said, if we love anyone or anything more than him, we cannot be his disciple. So we got to love God more than we love our church. I got some, ma'am. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh -huh. No, it's too much sugar in that for me. No, no, it's just water and just strawberries. That's okay, I'm good. I hope you're living holy and obeying the Lord, man. Don't be deceived by the false preachers that tickle your ears. 
I talked to your preacher for over an hour on the phone one day. He believes somebody can't even lose their salvation. That means you can lie and steal and still go to heaven. That's, that's, that's doctrines of devils, lady, young lady. Your preacher is deceiving you. You need to study your Bible. You need to study your Bible for yourself and don't be deceived. You know, Jesus said in the last days, there'll be many false preachers, many false prophets, and shall deceive many. So that's why we got a lot of people in America today that say they are Christian and they're not living holy. Yet it says in your Bible, without holiness, no one shall see the Lord. Yep, so we got a bunch of unholy Christians in America today. Did you know the majority of Christians don't even share their faith? They don't even share their faith. No, they'll say, come go to my church. My church is a good church. My church preaches from the Bible. Well, we got a bunch of different churches, and they all say they're preaching from the Bible. So we know, we know they can't all be preaching the truth because the Bible don't contradict itself. And we got a bunch of unholy Christians, so we know there's a lot of preachers that ain't preaching the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Yep. So that, you know, Satan knows how to unrightly divide the Bible. Satan is the master deceiver. So he deceives a person and then he gets them to start a church and then they deceive a bunch of other people. Paul talked about that in the Bible. Paul said in the last days, they will turn their ears away from the truth and believe fables or myths. Yep. They will want their ears tickled. In other words, tell me I can be saved and still have a little bit of sin in my life. Or just tell me I can still be saved and when, when the pressure's on, I can still sin. But you know what your Bible says? For if we sin willfully, after we've received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice, no more forgiveness for sins because we willfully sin it. That is in your Bible. Okay? But the false preachers don't talk to you about that. They don't do that. That won't draw a crowd. That won't make two services on Saturdays and two services on Sundays. No. If you preach the narrow and straight way, you'll do good to have a house full just for one service. Yep, because that's what Jesus said. Narrow and straight is the way, and few there be that find it. Only few people want to hear the narrow and straight way. Only few people want to hear that without holiness no one shall see God. But yet, so many people want to deceive themselves. That's terrible. To want to deceive yourself and then the Lord said many will come up to me on that day and shall seek to enter in and shall not be able because of sin Jesus said many will come up to me on that day and say Lord Lord we went to Calvary Chapel they're gonna say Lord Lord we were preachers I preach Lord I cast out demons in your name and Jesus said I'll tell them Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity or sin. I never knew you. So we're going to have a lot of preachers, according to my Bible, that's going to go to hell because they were making bad fruit. They weren't preaching narrow and straight as the way. So I encourage you to obey God. I encourage you to live holy. I encourage you to live holy and obey Jesus. Don't be deceived by the false preachers. Your Bible says, without holiness, no one shall see God. So you need to live holy. We need to live holy. We got a lot of people in America today, they wear, they put, they wear the cross around their neck, they go to church, but they're not living holy. You know your Bible says, without holiness, no one shall see God. Did your preacher tell you today that if you don't live holy, you're going to go to hell? No, I know that your preacher didn't tell you that because I've talked to your preacher for one hour on the phone and he said a man can't even lose his salvation.
That means you can go lie and steal and get drunk and still go to heaven, sir. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful that you can just do all that and still go to heaven? No, you can according to my Bible. But your preacher says a man can't lose his salvation. Well, I think that the thing is, I want to hear what you've got to say. because. Well, just listen. I'm preaching the word. I know, but when you say a person can't lose their salvation because if they lose their salvation, they never had it. No, that's not true, sir. Read your Bible. So I, I, Let me give you some scripture, sir. Because they weren't Let me give you some scripture, sir. I've heard your belief many times. So you don't really want to talk. You want to just tell me and you want to shout at me. I'm a preacher. I'm a preacher. I am too. Okay, so let me share some of you. So I came out here to say, what is it that you got going on? Because I wanted to actually listen to you. Well, I'm going to share with you what I got going on. Jesus said, any branch in me, that means they're in Christ, right? So they really got saved, didn't they? They just said, any branch in me, go on. Any branch in me that bears not forth fruit, he will cast the unprofitable servant. Who were they serving? Jesus, right? Well, I don't know. We'll have to see. So you, so when Jesus said this, sir, when Jesus said, I'm the vine, you are the branch, any branch in me, in me, in me, I will cast the unprofitable servant. You're literally telling me that you got so much pride you can't admit that they were serving Jesus? Well, they thought they were serving Jesus. Jesus but Jesus didn't tell them that they weren't really serving him. He said they were in him, sir. So do you, let me ask you this question. Let me finish the scripture, sir. Did you interrupt your preacher today? So, I, so, so, so I'm called by God to come out here and do this. God told me, because I do street preaching. And most of the people that I encounter are, are professing Christians that are living unholy because of churches like the one you go to, sir. So Jesus said, I'm the vine, you are the branch. Any branch in me that bringeth not forth fruit, I will cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth, where the worm dieth not and the fire is never quenched. That man lost his salvation, sir. Okay, so, but you, I understand. Jesus said no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God, sir. Right. So are you? Are you fit for the kingdom of heaven? I've, I got all the sin out of my life. I used to love sin. I was raised a Baptist. That's what this church is, really a glorified Baptist church. Your preacher told me he used to be a Baptist. Okay. I was I grew up in a Baptist church. I was told Romans 10, 9, and 10, right? You know what that says, right? Oh, that preachers use that. They'll pluck it and unrightly divide it. Confess with your mouth, brother. Pray this prayer with me. Confess Jesus. Okay. And you and then they say, now you're saved. Yeah, that's not true. But but the scripture actually says that. But you unrightly divide the word and deceive people. Because it says a whole lot of other things. So, so, so that's why your Bible says, study the word of God to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Let me ask you an honest question. How old are you, brother? 59. So you've been around a while. I'm 63. Been around a while, grew up in a Baptist church. Went to an Assembly of God church when I was 15. That preacher said, if you died right now, you're not sure you'd go to heaven. Okay, you need to come up here and get right with God. Well, I wasn't sure, brother. I just started smoking some marijuana. I just started having sex outside of marriage. I was looking at a little bit of pornography. I had a pornography magazine. But I went forward, sir. He said, pray this prayer with me. He said, you got to believe in Jesus. I said, yes, sir. I believe in Jesus the best I know how to believe. Because I grew up a Baptist. I'd done been baptized in water and all that stuff before. I memorized John 3.16 when I was five years old. Okay, They brainwashed kids, man. I was brainwashed one time by, by, by false Sunday school teachers that thought they were doing good. They thought they were doing good. Paul said in the last days there'll be, there'll be false preachers deceived and deceiving others. That's what's going on in your country. How many people, so my question to you, what's your name, brother? Mike. My name's Ray, Mike. Nice to meet you. So, Mike, how many people, answer this question honestly, not with pride. I will. How many people do you know that you've come across in your 59 years of life that say they love God, that live holy? Um, almost none of them. Thank you. You answered this question truthfully. 
but yet it says in your Bible, Mike, without, without holiness, no man shall see God. Your preacher don't preach that, Mike. He don't preach that. Neither do most preachers, Mike. It ain't just this preacher. I'm going to know. You go on my YouTube channel, and you'll see where I went to Silverdale Baptist Church a few weeks ago. The Lord has called me to do this, Mike. He said, Ray, he said, when you go out and street preach, most of the people you encounter claim to be saved. And they out here honky-tonking and drinking and fornicating and living in willful sin. But the preachers have deceived them like I was once deceived. Okay? So the Lord told me by getting in the Word, Mike, I went up there with, in, at 15, Mike, prayed that prayer with that preacher. He said, have you ever been baptized? I said, well, I can't remember ever being baptized. He said, well, you need to get baptized. The whole church, Mike, came out the next day and watched me get baptized in a pond down the road from the church. If that preacher, Mike, would have told me, Ray, you're going to have to leave all your sin dan laying down right here, man. You got to stop willfully sinning. As Jesus said, see, 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 these people, quote unquote Christians, they know scripture just enough to get them in trouble. That's what Satan wants them to do. Satan, Satan knows how to twist the Bible, Mike. Your, one of your fellow members come out here today and you know what he said to me? Oh, he started going on about this preacher talks about homosexuality and transgenderism. Oh, he probably does. So does a bunch of them, Mike. But he ain't telling you if you don't live holy, you won't see God. So the church has got a bunch of liars in it. Or I should say some. Okay? All right? Because I know I go out and talk to these people. These young people, I go to a lot of these, like, you'll see one of my YouTube videos where I go around on the, on, on, on the outskirts of Clemson College. Oh, yeah, there's, I, I, there's one girl on there. You know, she's foreign case. I went, I went to, uh, to the World Games in Alabama. And, a, and, a, and I was getting ready to get in my truck and I offered a book to this man that I wrote. And I said, do you love Jesus? He said, yeah, man. He said, I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit. And I said, are you living holy? And then the Lord spoke to me and said, are you fornicating? You know, fornication, sex outside of marriage, right? Mike, you know good and well that most people that say they're Christians, that ain't married or fornicate. I used to be one of them. But the preacher, preacher made me believe I could get away with that, Mike. He didn't tell me in the Bible where Paul says, as become a saint, let not fornication be once named among you. Not once named among you. So this preacher will do like Paul said. Paul said Satan has ministers of righteousness. Think about that. Satan's got ministers of righteousness. Like this man preaching against homosexuality in a lot of churches in America. Man, they're they, they going to talk about this transgender stuff going on and all this. And teaching that to our kids. But that same preacher ain't preaching to these young kids. Young man, you got to believe in Jesus. And you got to obey Jesus. You got to live holy. So we got a bunch of unholy Christians while they're putting down, rightfully so, speaking about the homosexuality, okay? But you know what? The preachers are saying there's no works involved in salvation. Your preacher told me that on the phone. That's, that's contrary to the Bible, Mike. So Jesus said this. Jesus said this. Tell me if I'm mistaken. Jesus said, strive to enter into the narrow and straight gate. Is that something we got to do, Mike? Yeah. Amen. Jesus said we have to deny ourselves. Is that something we got to do, Mike? Jesus said, listen to this. Luke 14. Jesus said, okay, I want to get you on my YouTube, Mike. Jesus said, he that loves, think about this, Mike. See the hair on my arms right now? This is powerful. God's word is powerful. Jesus said, he that, let me turn this down. Jesus said, he that loves. Notice he didn't say he that just believes. He said, he that loves father, mother, brother, sister, son, 
daughter, husband, wife, themselves, more than me, cannot be my disciple. That is in your Bible. Your Savior said that. But the false preachers ain't preaching it, Mike. There's people I know because God tells me these things through the Holy Spirit. There's people that love this church more than they love Jesus. I'm out here preaching Jesus, man. I just quoted, I've, I've quoted these scriptures to you out here that I just shared with you and more today. But I'm harassed by so-called Christians. This is prophesied in your Bible. This ain't nothing new. What did Jesus say? You'll be persecuted for what? Righteousness sake. You know who killed mine and your savior, brother? We the religious them. people. All of us killed them. Well, technically. Yeah. But in the day, in reality, yeah. the religious leaders, Mike. Right. Your preacher won't let me in there to preach the unadulterated word of God. So God says, stand out in front of the church and do it. Okay? So if you truly love God, this sign's for you. That sign's for you. No, Come out of her, my people. Let me tell you something. So I came out here... So here's the deal. I rake my own self over the coals every day because I sit there and I watch at these people and I see how phony it is. And I know that they're lost. It's like this. It, it, Billy Graham said one time, if Jesus was to come back, to, who all, all saved, they all put their hands up. He said, if Jesus would come back right now, um, who all would go to heaven? They all raised their hand. He said, if Jesus was to come right now, there'd be a whole bunch of people sitting in their chairs with their hand up in the air. And that's the way it is. Well, guess what? Let me stop it. Let's stop it. Billy Graham helped make some of them false converts. I know. He, he, you know what? Let me, hold on now. The Lord wants you. To, the Lord wants you to learn some things too. Okay. All right. The Lord wants you to. You, you've been right. God is showing me in the spirit right now. You've been wrestling with this. I wrestle this every day with everybody. Okay. But God's got me out here. He, I might be the only one I'm out. You might be the only one I'm out here for today. Even though I don't believe that. But you are definitely one of them. The Holy Spirit showed me that. Okay, It's time to be bold, my brother. Like your Bible says. Paul says, be bold. He said, preach the word. Look at the hair on my arms, Mike. Paul says, preach the word with boldness. So you need to go to your preacher. Like I had to go to several preachers in my life, Mike, where I went to their church. And I said, Pastor, I see the same people go up to be saved over and over again. How come you're not sharing these scriptures with them? And I, I quote him some scriptures that changed my life. John 14. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And then I will manifest myself to you. You know what the modern day Christianity teaches in America today, Mike? You just, you just confess Jesus. Believe and confess your sins. Now try to live right. And now Jesus is in you. Jesus taught the opposite of that, Mike. He said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Then I will manifest myself to you. He ain't coming in here to live in an unholy temple. So here's the difference, Mike. The majority of Christians, and I will answer to God for saying this. Jesus said a man will give account for every idle word. Okay, But, but he's made me to know this. This is why I'm out here today. This is hard work, Mike. My back is a little sore now. I've been out here since the first service, 30 minutes before the first service. Okay, But, but the Lord says, there's a few people in this church that truly love God. I'm calling them out. I'm calling them out. He says, I want you to go out there, Ray. I want you to go out there, Ray, and, and bring to light to people like Mike that know they're not hearing the whole truth. Okay? And tell them, come out of her, my people. Because the Lord's coming back soon, Mike. He's coming back for a church without what? Sin. Amen. And not that ain't lukewarm. He said he'll spew them out. But your false preacher says a man can't lose his salvation. We went on about 30 minutes on the phone with that. I just started giving him scripture. I had to fight to give the man scripture, Mike. I know, but let me just say one thing. So, so, so what is your thoughts? What is your thoughts on... They went out among us because they were never of us. See, people think they're saved, but mm -hmm. they're really not. Amen. Okay? So Amen. they think they're saved, but they're really not. Right. But if they really were saved, they wouldn't be living like that. No, nope. no. Nope. So you think See, that, that's not true. So do you think you can be saved and then still living like 
Absolutely, brother. I just quoted you Jesus' I know, but words. I'm just, I'm just asking you a question, and if you if you con if you if you're so condescending, that ain't for I'm asking you a question that's well, brother, something I struggle with because listen to me, you just talk if Jesus is in you, okay, if he's truly in you, mm -hmm. are you still able to go out Absolutely. and live like sin? Absolutely. Why did Jesus why did Paul say this? Why did Paul say, I run the race that I may win the prize? Mm -hmm. Paul knew he hadn't won the prize yet. Paul said, if you can, and Paul said this, okay, I can't remember exactly where it is, but you can Google it. He said, if you continue in the word, if you stay steadfast. So let me give you some more powerful scriptures about what you're saying. So why would Paul say, Let's go, let's go stick with Jesus' words, because I, I, to me, that's the most powerful, right? I've heard so many things in my life. Well, uh, like I can quote the book of James. Satan's such a crafty deceiver, right? So I can quote the book of James where James says, faith working alone is dead and, and all that. And they'll say, well, I'm not one of the 12 tribes of Israel. I said, oh, so you, so you don't understand what Paul says you're grafted in? So you don't understand. So you're gonna you're gonna ignore what James said, the whole book of James, like Martin Luther did. Like Martin Luther said, he didn't consider the book of James, the book of First, Second, and Third John, the, the, the infallible word of God. Martin Luther said a Christian could go out and commit murder thousands of times a day and still be saved. That's a quote from Martin Luther, man. Isn't that shocking, man? That's crazy. It's it's insane. It's as insane as. Oh, you you know, get a sex change, right? So they want to pick these preachers want to pick on that while they pour, they preaching poison. Go on my YouTube channel. I called up a Methodist preacher that stayed with the United Methodist Church, which is the, which went they just split, right? The Methodist Church. One side is pro LGBTQ now. He he stayed on that side. And I was a humble preacher. I was so shocked that that preacher listened to me for a long time. I said, Pastor, do you tell your people that homosexuality is a sin and the death? He didn't say yes. He didn't answer the question. So I said, he said, well, liars ain't going to go to heaven either. I said, that's right. You're right. I said, we, don't, we shouldn't pick on homosexuals. But your church just split over this issue. So we need to talk about it. He says, well, I got to admit that the Bible says a homosexual will not go to heaven. Mm -hmm. I said, so do you tell your people that if they do that, they'll go to hell? The preacher says to me, who am I to tell anybody they're going to hell? I said, it's your job. According to your Bible, it's your job. You're the shepherd over your sheep. I mean, read the book of Jeremiah. I told the preacher, God was angry with the preachers. That's where we are in your country today. He's angry with these false preachers that are tickling people's ears and telling them like Paul says, doctrines of devils. So I'm gonna give you some more scripture. So Jesus said in Revelations, he said, he that overcometh and endureth to the end. That means me and you gotta endure to the end, Mike. Right. You know, I'm going through the toughest time in my life. I got truly born again when I was 17. Now, I prayed the prayer, grew up in the Baptist church. I was told I was saved from, from a kid because I believed in Jesus. And I told you at 15 years old, I went and prayed with a Assembly of God preacher. That preacher didn't tell me I had to lay all my sin down either. So I walked away from there and that preacher told me I was saved, man. Like all these so-called saved Christians you know that's not living holy, that's willfully sinning. Did you know your Bible says in Hebrews 10, 26, if we willfully sin after we receive the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins. That means there's no more forgiveness for sins. If we willfully sin, that is in your Bible. It's common sense if you think about it. If, if, if you think about it, it's like, okay, I'm going to go out here and, and fornicate or tell a lie. And, the, and, and the, you go to church and the preacher makes you feel good. Oh, we're all sinners, man. You know, that's what they'll say. Really? No, we were all sinners. 
But if you repent and come to Christ, you're supposed to be a righteous man now. That's in your Bible. Jesus said this, I come not to call the righteous unto repentance, but the sinners. Jesus told, Can I ask you a question? hold on, I got to answer his first. What was your question? So his question's about losing your salvation. Oh, I, I was wondering, I was wondering that you're here about this church. Yes, sir. What specifically do you have that's against the church? Well, if you listen, if you would have been I mean, listening. Do you know, do you, have you talked to the pastor? Yes, yeah, yeah. over an hour on the phone. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, my son, my son to? used to go to this church. He may still go to it. I'm not sure. Is that, uh, so is that what you're talking about? Well, I came out here because he was talking about losing your salvation, and I was talking Okay, about so let me finish script okay. tonight. I, I, just, just listen, sir. Are you, a, are you a member? Are you going to this church? I go to this church. Yeah. How long have you been going here? Five years. Okay. So, Mike, so Jesus said, He that overcometh and endureth to the end, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. Listen to this. And he shall not blot his name out of the book of life. Mike, I think you haven't lost your common sense yet. But, but the false preaching, a lot of so-called Christians like, like me and you talked about here today, they've lost their common sense. They've been brainwashed by false preachers. That means your name could be blotted out of the book if you don't endure to the end. It goes for me too. Mike, I was married for 41 and a half years and my wife left me because I was a little too into Jesus. Guess where she went when she left me? I wasn't going to church at the time, Mike. I kind of gave up looking because I want, I'm not going to go to that church that tickles my ears, man. The Lord, the Holy Spirit's in here, Mike. He ain't going to let me sit there and listen to a man deceive other people. Even though I know the truth, I know he's deceiving other people. The Holy Spirit won't let me do that. But when she left me, Mike, she went straight to church. She went to the church of God, Brandon, which we had been to most of our life. They deceiving people, too. They preach the word a little better than these, because I know these things. But they still putting out the poison, Mike. They still putting out the poison. Jesus said, listen to what Jesus said. In the last days, false Christ and false preachers shall arise and shall deceive many. Now, you admit that most people you know that claim to be Christians aren't living holy. That's scary, isn't it, Mike? That's the majority of Americans. That's the majority of Americans. That's why sin is rampant in the country. If, if, why, why, I mean, let's just be honest. Why, this sounds crazy, but it fits with this man's doctrine. Why can't a homosexual be a Christian? If it's only by faith, keyword only, then a homosexual can be a Christian. Okay? I mean, this preacher, it, he don't preach against sex outside of marriage. Okay. What? He, preaches, he preaches against all that. But they'll, he don't preach they'll go to hell if they do it, Mike. I talked to him on the phone. Okay, I, you, you wouldn't believe the stuff I've heard in my life. I've, I've, I listened to a radio station years ago. I'm going to feed you a little bit. Yeah, you're working hard. Today. Thank you, brother. It is hard work. I appreciate it. So, so, uh, so Jesus said, what, I, this is shocking, the stuff I've heard in my life. It's scary too, man. Okay. That's why Jesus said, if it were possible, the very elect could be deceived. That's where we at, Mike, in these latter days. Okay? That's where we at. So, excuse me one second. Mike, did you say you talked to our pastor? Yeah, for a good hour on the phone. What's his name? Don't remember. It was three years ago. Can you remember somebody's name three years ago that you talked to for an hour? Well, if I, Just be honest, sir. Don't let your pride get in the way. Chances are you probably won't remember his name. No, I'm actually really good with names. So. Well, are you? Well, I'm terrible with names. <laughs> so anyway, see, see, Satan's trying to draw you away. Let me give this to you, sorry, and I got to go ketchup and mustards. Thank you, sir. There was no mayo. Hmm? There was no mayo. 
No mayo. There was no mayo. I'm going to take it home anyway. Thank you, sir. All right, y'all too. Obey the Lord and live holy. Don't be deceived by the false preacher. So, so in Hebrews, it says, for it is impossible, key word, impossible, for those who were once enlightened and made partakers of the Holy Spirit and, and partakers of that, oh, I get this mixed up sometimes. There's five things it says here. It's very, very powerful scripture. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened. Here, actually, I'll let you look it up. Let me just ask you another question. While no, no, this answer, this, I got to answer your question. If I'm not going to be able to have it share back. Okay, go it's ahead. It's just going to be just you talking. Well, I'm trying to answer okay, your question. You haven't, you haven't, I've asked you a question. You go on for all this time. I'm sitting here so patient and listening. Okay, I'm go ahead, sir. And every time I say something, you go. Go uh, ahead, sir. Go ahead. I don't want to do that. Okay, go ahead, I sir. came out here actually to find out what you were about. I actually told my kids, they go, what is he doing? This crazy guy go, he has the right to do well, sir, I'm, I'm, so, so that. Sir, you're so also I'm, distracting yeah. me, so go ahead. So, go so ahead. I'm distracting, oh, okay, well then never mind. If I'm distracting But I'm trying to you, answer your question, sir. If I'm distracting you, then never mind. No, I, no, no I you're not distracting you. me with a good question, I'm sir, but arguing is no, you know, Paul you. says not to argue. Okay, so basically, really what it's been is, you just speak, you say everything you want to say, you have no sin, you have no pride. I don't have, willfully you sin, sir. You don't have any of that stuff, you have no arrogance, I don't willfully you have no sin. ego, you have none of that stuff, and then if somebody comes out here. Sir, if I had an ego, I wouldn't be out here today. Brother. I wouldn't be out here today, this is hard work. Why is that? I do it every day. I'm out there every day. You know what my uniform says when I pick up poop? You know what my uniform says? Picking up poop, talking about Jesus. Amen. Okay? Amen. You don't That's your job, you get paid. Yeah, I, I own the company. Yeah, I don't get paid to do this, sir. So, but the thing is, is this. I tell people, you can talk about Jesus anywhere you go, anytime you want. Okay? All the time. I listen to all these people make excuses. I know what you're talking about. Right. Okay? But yeah, you go into a false church, sir. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. I go because they have a youth group. And on top of it, that's my question. I was but they deceive in the youth, sir. Question. They deceive in the youth. Do you know of any pastor or church that preaches like you're talking right now. Yes. You know, any of them. Yes. Where? Right up here on Lookout Mountain. There's two holiness churches up there. Okay, what's the name of them? Uh, one, the name of one is Scenic Land or Scenic View. I've been there about six or seven times. And their pastor's just, just as perfect. Well, I don't... Because the reason why I go here is because I went around to 20 churches when I came out here from Arizona. 20. Okay? And the reason why I come here is one for the youth program and because I watch this pastor talk about those things as a pastor that are really hard to talk about. Like, you know, you know that uh, you've got all these people trying to let the world suck them up. Like, like because now it's 2024 and all of a sudden homosexuals, okay. Or, you know, you know, these different things, they're okay. They're not okay. They weren't okay before and they're not okay now. Okay. And the thing is. is but your preacher really says. A man can lose his. A man can't lose his salvation. Your preacher told me with his own mouth, sir, that there's no works involved in salvation. Yet your Bible says, Mike. What do you think about John MacArthur? A false preacher, 100. percent Okay. What do you think about uh, Sproles? Uh, don't know enough about it. Okay. So here's the thing: you'll take two preachers. I mean, these people are Bible preachers. You got. You know, yeah, they all say that, sir. And then they disagree on two different subjects. You got to be saved to be baptized. You got to be baptized. You can't be. Well, some, some things don't really matter. Right. right. That's okay. What I'm some things don't matter, but salvation matters. Right. So here's the deal. And you said it out of your own mouth. They say they're saved, but but you know they really aren't. So I sit there and I worry about that. I forget all these people. I care about. All that. I care about my kids and me. Here's the deal. I sit there and struggle with my own self every day. Am I really saved? That's some of the thoughts I think that I'm pissed off at this guy driving on the car i'm supposed to be a godly man I, I, i'm watching a show that doesn't you know I should, well you I should question one. yourself all day long well that's sad though bro i know let me I give you a scripture mike okay. you 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 accuse me of being arrogant and stuff no, like I said, that you, i said you i threw all those things out and i said you're none of those yeah i said that's what i'm talking about to you because see listen i came out here in love to listen to what i know that i believe that okay I and, that. and I looked at your personality and it seemed to be very uh, 
uh, like I'm John the Baptist, forceful. Like I have that same personality, but I back myself off to hear what you had to say because I don't think I know it all. Well, I don't either. Okay. But so I, I do know I do know about what you're asking, and I tried to finish giving you scripture. Let me tell you something. Church is going on right now, and I'm out here with you, and I'm talking to you. So all that stuff that you're sitting there thinking about, maybe you should think about that stuff because I'm trying to tell you I didn't come out here trying to put you down. Or I know that, Mike. I know that. I wanted to hear. I know that, Mike. I've already told you I know that. And, and I'm going to take all the stuff that I heard you say with me. Here, let me give you a book I wrote. It'll answer some of your questions. Actually. But it, but the thing is, is this. It'll answer a lot of your questions. I, I, only, I, I read my Bible, and it's like my responsibility to know what the Bible says. Amen. It's not Amen. Me to listen and that's to one of the main else. reasons I'm out here. My Study the Word to show yourself approved unto God, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. Okay. It's, it's my responsibility that my kids know the truth. Amen. That's me. I'm on YouTube. Okay, well. Under Ray Nix. I have a lot of good messages on there. Okay. Maybe maybe the Lord will show you. You already admitted you know what I'm saying is true. So maybe the Lord will put us together to do some street preaching. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Because not very many people want to do this. This is hard work. My flesh, Mike did not want to do this. I don't want to go in front of these churches. I don't like, I, the cops come up every time like they did here today. Because they, they, I reckon your pastor or somebody said they, they, they want me to leave. But I'm out here preaching just the word of God. If, if you, I'll put some of this on my YouTube channel, but I won't put it all on there. But all I'm doing over and over and over is quoting Jesus and the scriptures. Okay, And that, that ought to be, a true brother should say, Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Amen, brother. But doesn't he say that not one of us is righteous? Not no, not one. But you're misinterpreting that. Okay, but does he say that? The Scripture says that, putting in its proper context. The Book of First John, chapter three, says this, Mike. Mm -hmm. Let no man be deceived. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. That's a scripture in your Bible. So put that together with how so many people can quote the scripture that you just quoted. Unrightly divide it out of context. Go back and study why did he say that. I know, but he Jesus also said, I come not to call the righteous unto repentance, Mike. But here's the deal. That's the whole thing. When he was saying, I come not to, I'm coming for none of them because none of them are righteous. No, that but ain't at all what he's saying, Mike. Hold on. His, his, his disciple says, he says, why do you call me good? Why do you call me Lord? Well, yeah, he says, call no man good but thy father. Because there's not one righteous. No, not one. Yeah, but 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 interpret it that properly. That's not, how do you interpret any different than that? Do you believe the Bible contradicts itself? No. Okay, so I just gave you a scripture. This is this is what the Lord has taught me, Mike. Okay. I'm just going to give you scripture. Okay. It's not about my opinion. But I'm, I'm, I, you've interrupted me many times for just trying to give you scripture. I've interrupted you? Yes. Sir, Mike, do you admit I come out here to preach the word? Preach it, brother. Preach it. So, so Mike. I've got your book. I'm going to read it. So, Jesus said, hold on now. See? It seems like you want to put, but what I do, just am telling you is this. When you quote scripture and I quote it back, you tell me I'm the one that misinterprets it. You don't think. If I give you scripture. A disciple's talking to Jesus and he says, why do you call me good? There's no one good, no, not one. How am I just, how am I misinterpreting that? I'm going to give you scripture to show you that. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. So, so in first John, it also says this, in this, the children of God are made manifest and the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness is not a child of God. That's in your Bible. Okay. Do you think you're righteous? Well, I don't like to consider myself righteous, but according to Paul in the scriptures, I am a righteous man. Yes, according to scripture. So, but I don't want to exalt myself. I know this. I have no willful sin in my life. I hate sin. I used to love sin. Okay. I was made to believe I could have sin in my life and still be saved. Like I said, I grew up a Baptist. Then I went to Assembly of God and Church of God's many years of my life. Okay? And they preach a little more truth, but there's still that poison out there. It's like the Church of God in Lafayette, Georgia. 
Okay. This pastor's dead now, but his name was Pastor Bruce. I saw these people go up for salvation. So if you come up and I'm your preacher for salvation, I'm going to tell you what God's word says. You got to believe. You got to confess your sins. And you got to repent. You got to be ready to lay them down. Right there. That's right. Like he told a adulterous woman, your sins be forgiven you. Go and sin no more. Lest a worse thing come upon you. So, I'm going to tell them, John 14, which is what changed my life. This is when I got truly born again, Mike, in my bedroom of my home. Was already told I was born again by a Baptist preacher and an ascended God preacher. Because see, the thing is, is we're just, you said you just wanted to give scripture. Let's give scripture. I don't want to hear all the other stuff. Okay, well, that's kind of rude. No, it's not rude. You've done that to me. That's what you keep saying. Every time I bring Mike, up, but I come out here to do a job. Scripture, I quote a scripture. You tell me I misinterpret. I tell you, uh, you, but you have no thought. Okay, let me give you some more scripture. Uh, that's not true at all, Mike. You, you just keep telling me. I'm misinterpreting it. And that I'm giving you scripture. Did, I've already given you two scriptures, You're right? You're giving me all kinds of scriptures. I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you that this Bible that we read that's alive... I thought differently 10 years ago about something that I think about today. I'm in my Bible every That's single right. morning. Yeah. So what happens when I was eight years ago and I thought I was right? And then in five years ago, I thought I was right. And then two years ago, I thought I was well, right. Well, hopefully the Holy Spirit is teaching yeah, you. He keeps changing me. Well, but you sound well, like the you Lord. don't have any more changing to do. Oh, well, that's not true at all. Okay, then let's get to the point. John 14, go ahead. John 14, Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Okay. Do you know anybody that can do that? Yeah, I'm one of them. You can't do it. Well, there's no need to. Why? So Jesus you told you to do something. You can, so Jesus is telling you to do something you can't do. Yep. Wow. He's telling you to. You no, know, he's telling you to strive for it, but you can't do it. So when the man come up to Jesus, Mike, the rich young ruler, he said he asked a great question. Lord, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What did Jesus tell him? He told him to leave, leave all your belongings and follow me. The first thing he told him was keep the commandments. Okay. So what did that man say to him, Mike? He said, I've kept all these things since my youth. And then he told him to leave But Mike life. would say, no, you can't. You a liar. No, I'm telling you this. You can't do nothing without Jesus. Okay? So, 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 so let me, Jesus. so let's talk about that. So, I, so, so I can't. I can't not lie to you without Jesus. You so I need Jesus in order to not lie to you, Mike. You need Jesus that's that's delusional, no, Mike. No, no. That's no, delusional. hundred percent Jesus and none percent you. Why did Jesus say repent or perish? Did Jesus say, let me repent for you? No. No, he didn't. He said, you repent. But you're telling me, I'm telling you, you know, Jesus said, if you love me, he went on in John 14. He said, he that has my commandments, that's important, you got to know what they are, and keeps them, he it is that loves me. But a, hold on, Mike. I'm sitting here. And he shall be loved by my Father, and we shall come unto him and make our home in him. He's not going to make his home. What Jesus just said there to me and you, which this chapter changed my life, this chapter... Okay, let me tell you what this 17-year-old boy did. Think about it when you were 17 years old. Okay? I had a pornography magazine, hardcore, cost $8 in 1977. I, was, I had a nickel bag of marijuana in my drawer. Okay? I loved the world's music. ZZ Top, Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath. Journey. Never heard of Journey. Sticks, Fog Hat, all that. Pink Floyd. Okay? Uh, Why did Jesus come and die? Um, let me finish sharing it. So, 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 so in one day, in one day, I laid all that sin down. Mike, you actually did a great job. In one day, I'm telling you, you did a great job. In one day, I laid all that sin down. This guy knows what he's saying. In one day, no, he actually is admitted. He's confused. I'm always. That's the whole thing. Is that's what I can admit. But keep studying the word, brother. Keep studying the word. Why, if you could do it, then why did Jesus come die this gruesome death? Because we're born in sin, man. Right. 
And so you think that you can go the rest of your life without ever sinning again. With the, With the power, power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, what? what? So see, y'all disobey. Yeah. See, see, here's the thing. You, do you What's your name, bro? You I'm getting you on my YouTube channel. Do you disobey? From so Jesus you? said. Quick question. Just simple question. I know what Jesus said. No, I'm not sure you do. Okay. How do you? I know think that? you know. Wait. How do you? How would you know? You that? go to this church. No. You go to this church. So I go. That's to proof church. enough. It's proof enough that I don't know what Jesus said. You don't know all of what Jesus said. All key word. I just have a question. And I'm gonna go, and then you could do. You don't have to go. I know, but do you disobey? No, sir. You don't break the rules. No, sir. You don't break any rules. Not that I'm aware of. What if you are? The Bible says, "He that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin." Okay. I used to break the rules, and the preacher told me I was saved. Right, right. And then you got saved. I got truly born again. Truly born again. Right. I don't believe in using the term "saved." You know, "saved" is a past tense word. Would you agree with that? No, I believe it's present. So S A V E D. Yeah, yeah, you. So I'll you don't you believe what, the word no, S A V E D no, is a past yeah. tense word? No, because it's employed both ways. I but am, I'm asking you about the word. I am, spelling. and I'm telling you because I know the Greek word for saved. See, I'll, I'll. The go, Greek word I'll, for saved is 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 is, is like I'll, Philippians two twelve. No, no, no. Let me tell you. Let every man work out his own salvation. With fear and trembling. Yeah, I know. So the salvation is ongoing. Yeah, it's ongoing. Exactly. So I'm not. But your preacher don't preach that. No. He listen, don't preach that. Listen, we are not just saved by the gospel, but we are being saved through the gospel. Amen. And that's Amen. what we preach. No, sir, I talked to your pastor for an hour. No, you didn't. Sir, your preacher preaches the opposite, quite frankly. No, he doesn't. Sir, when that man right. told me on the phone. Right, well, listen, I can't change your mind, right? No, you can't. Okay, I, then, then why are we talking? Well, I'm trying to, you want I'm to, change trying to answer mind. your question. Right. I'm going to give you the word. You're a good man. I'm sure I'm you're a good man. Listen, word. listen, you're a good man. Only, only God can change your mind, and you got to no, be open true, to that. Because I've met people who have been able to that God uses to change my mind. Well, but you got to listen to it. Well, of course. Okay, God, God sent me out here. here. Listen, God, God sent God, me out here. Share this. This is great. You're, I, I honestly think you're firing at the wrong target. But no, uh, the church is the problem in America. What's your first name? I'm not going to tell you. Say that's uh, is that love? Yeah, but no, because you put me on your camera, and then you uh, you'll well, probably post this without my approval. I, I don't need your approval. approval. No. In okay. America, it's a one-party right, agreement. Great. All right, great. I mean, why be ashamed, brother? You're supposed to love Jesus, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, I'm not ashamed of Jesus. Okay, so why be ashamed to be on my YouTube? Uh, because I know some of the agenda so this, that some of the some of you guys have. You want to? Well, post. you can see my. You can go on no, my channel. No, no, no. Listen, listen. I believe you. Listen, no, you don't. Have to, I don't want to see it. No, I'm going to give you I one of my books I wrote. No, 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 you're good. Give it to someone who doesn't know the Lord. Uh, I, if you go to this church, you definitely don't know right, God. Right, right, of course. You're right. all-knowing. No, I'm not. Well, I mean... I'm not. Yeah, that's like... Yeah. You, you know, Paul talked all about false preachers in your Bible. I know man. that. I know that. Yeah. I know How that. many people do you know that say they're Christians live holy? Answer that question for me. Yeah. Be honest. Don't let your pride get in the way. How many people do you yeah. know that say they're Christians yeah. that live holy? How many? Just throw a percentage out there. I know that there are Christians that, well, I would know. In your that. average world that you live yeah, in, I'm on the job. This way. I'll talk to you, but I'm just going to turn this way. Um, I would say that there are people who believe they know the Lord. A, a big number, but only a small number really do. That's why the gate of salvation is narrow. That's right. The that's what I've been preaching out here. Well, that's what I preach. That the road. But you go to a church that don't preach the narrow nah, straight road. That's not true. It is true. Here's the problem. Man, I talked to this man no, you intensely listen, for listen, over an that's hour. That's not true. That's false. You know, my that's son used to go to this church. That's sir. fine for you. Did you know this preacher baptized my son? That's, sir? But that's fake news. Listen. No, it's real news. Listen, your son may have come. That's here. that's the, that's that's yeah. very rude to say that's fake I'm news. I'm sorry you feel that way, but you know what? Sometimes a hard word is in, is is due in season. You know, so. But it's got to be the we truth. We might not. We might not. It's got to no, be the truth. This is no. That's for you to say that. What's your name? Why should I tell you my name? Great. So now we're on the same, I, No, same I'm going to tell you my name. No, my name is to. Ray. No, you don't have to. Ray. I'm not going to be a hypocrite. Ray, you're Ray Comfort? No, I'm Ray Lips. You're Ray Comfort. No, I'm not Ray Comfort. I look like you're, Ray Comfort. You do look like Ray Comfort. No. You sound like I him. know who Ray Comfort is. Okay. Anyway. And I don't agree with it. Ray Comfort you don't believes agree. a man can't lose his salvation okay. either. Okay. okay. That's great. I'm just getting to know Ray a little bit. No, you. He's trying to. He's no, trying. I'm not trying. He won't even tell me his first name. 
Okay. And that, I mean, anyway, so rude. We uh, my brother, he's supposed to be my brother in Christ, yeah. but he won't even tell me his first name. Well, I don't know if you're in Christ. Well, I don't know if you're well, saved. Well, come home with me. Look at my YouTube. No. Call my son. I mean, I, Call I, Levi. I, if he still Levi? goes. He used to go to this church. Levi. Well, there's a lot of Levi's. What's his name? Levi Nix. Levi Nix. Oh, yeah. Levi. Levi Nix. Right. Ask Levi if his dad practices what he preaches. He'll tell you. Sure. Y'all take care. All right, I will. Thank you. Y'all live holy. Obey Jesus. Your Bible says, without holiness, no one shall see the Lord. I agree with you. Jesus said, narrow and straight is the way that leads unto the kingdom of heaven, and few there be that find it. We got a lot of people saying they love Jesus, and they go to church, but they're not living holy because the preachers are tickling their ears and deceiving them. That's really sad, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Jesus said, you are my friends if you keep my commandments. And I done had a man come out here today and tell me we can't keep his commandments. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? Why would Jesus ask us to do something that we can't do? It makes no sense. That's... There's a lot of delusional people in this world, ladies and gentlemen. 